back in the eat food kitchen guys and today i'm making one of my grandmother's oldie goldies coconut drop so stay tuned I ain't gonna lie to tell you, a little nervous because I'm not a baker. I had little experiences before, which I'll tell only later on in the show. But we're making a very forgiving recipe, which is coconut drops. Um, I don't think this is just to Trinidad alone. It is a West Indian thing. In St. Lucia, I think they call it rock cake. And with good reason, because the outside's supposed to be a little bit kind of tough or crunchy and then when you break it apart it's supposed to be nice and soft and buttery on the inside so we're going to make it today so stay tuned so yes guys we are making coconut drops <laughs> um this is one of the things that i grew up on with my grandmother she was a boss baker i was telling you guys before not so much of a baker because it's too precise too precise so i'm measuring out my flour here and um, if you are like me, um, you like it the traditional way, which is just just the grated coconut in there alone. But I know some people, they like raisins, they like the mixed cherries. So we're going to be doing two batches and we'll see how they come out. But I kind of like it the traditional way. And thankfully, this is a forgiving recipe, so you can't really go wrong with it. And we're using cuisine, all-purpose flour. Just measuring out two and a half cups here. Yeah, that should be it. Hold on, I forget to sift. I can sift after. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, so I'm going to add in now my nutmeg. And nutmeg is such a nice spice. Nice Caribbean spice. And some cinnamon. I'll just use this for now. Because we're using all-purpose flour, we are adding baking powder and baking soda. There's a science behind it. Don't ask me what it is. I just know we have to do it, yeah? So I'll just mix this around a little bit. And because I did not sift it before, no worries, we're just gonna sift it now. So I think this is where my phobia started with bacon growing up. Uh, my neighbor, Miss Venn, I'll call her name. <laughs> um, she wanted to have like a cooking class. She's a big time caterer, right? And she wanted to have a cooking class for the young women or the young girls at the time growing up, right? So it was maybe about five of us. So like I said, she's a caterer and a big time baker. So we had to make chocolate cake that day. And um, she split us up into groups. I think it was me and my friend Natasha making chocolate cake. Hey, hey, so we mix the butter, put it in the oven. Maybe after about 10 minutes, she said, um, Oli put some um, sugar, because like she saw the sugar on the counter. I watched my friend, my friend watched me. She like go one stoops. And I said, well, Miss Fenn, maybe we could salvage it or something. So we end up taking the cake out. She was mad. I feel shame. Me and my friend feel shame because all my other friends, their cake came out good. We took out the cake, which obviously was not smooth anymore. It was kind of curdly and added the sugar then. Needless to say, it was a big disaster. So I think from then is where my um, phobia with bacon kind of originated from. Um, I much prefer cook cooking because you could eyeball, you know, you could taste, but bacon is so precise. So shout out and big up to all the bakers out there, all are real good. So right, so everything is sifted here. So I have the, um, the flour, the cinnamon, the nutmeg, baking soda, baking powder, and now I am going to put in some chilled butter. Now there are various ways that people do coconut drops, right? This is the one I like. Um, and I think with this method, especially with pastries, when you add cold butter, it creates a sort of crumbly, flaky effect. So that's what we're going to do here. Maybe I should have let you um, take out the butter a little earlier. Oops, you're gonna lose a butter along the way. <laughs> it's a good thing I added extra butter, right? So you're just gonna work it in and we're gonna work it in the dough until it gets kinda crumbly. And then we're gonna separate it because like I said, I like it kinda traditional. And um, I know some people like it with raisins and cherries. So we're gonna add that in after. 
Right, so our butter is incorporated and when you feel it, it has this sort of a slightly silky kind of feel, slightly crumbly. So at this point, I am going to add in my coconut and this is freshly shredded coconut. Mix this in and then I will add in my sugar. And then just before, well, the sugar would be the last thing that I would add before I do the separation. Right, so for sugar, we're using brown sugar today, cuisine brown sugar. You could use white if you want. Somehow I like, for this, I like the idea of um, using brown sugar. And it's a half cup to one cup. This is, this is for your taste, right? Um, based on how sweet you want it. I imagine if you want to, if you're not into sugar and you want to use honey, you could do that. I'm not too sure what the consistency of the um, batter would be like, but... If you're not into sugar, you could more or less use honey. I've seen people use honey in replace of sugar lots of times. I'm gonna add half of the mixture into this bowl. Is it like half? Yeah. So remember I said before we're making it traditional with just the coconut alone. And then for those who like it jazzed up, we're gonna add some raisins, which I am not a raisins fan. Don't shoot me. So these are for all the raisin fans out there. And I'm just going to eyeball this. Yeah, that look like enough. I'll also put in some mixed cherries, just a little. It's kind of gooey. So I guess this one will be a little bit more colorful. And then we'll decide how the taste is after. Maybe just a little bit more. Right, nice. So we basically have all our dry ingredients together. So now we are going to add in the wet ingredients. So we have some, one cup of coconut milk. Now I've seen some recipes use um, eggs. We're not using eggs in this recipe. We're just going to use the milk. And then if we need a little bit more, we'll just add some water. So I'm making a tiny well in the middle. I'll mix this one first. And we'll see how it goes. Now the texture, it's supposed to get like kind of tacky. That's the texture you're looking for. Right, so I took a little break there to clean up a little bit. You see why I don't like bacon, but that's all part of the process. Um, ideally, I was supposed to have added this coconut essence in with the liquid, um, but I forgot, so we're just gonna add it in now. Just a little. And you could use armor and you could use vanilla essence and the rest I will add in here for when we're doing the other batch. So this is it here. I still find it is a bit runny for my liking and from what I remember seeing. So to be safe, I just add in a little tips, just a little some some, And that should be the final amount. I think for this one, I really go in with a feel. I know bacon is a science, but today I feel it, yeah? And a look. So now we're gonna mix this one and I'll just add the water, well the coconut milk bit by bit until I get the consistency that I want. Add a little more. Mm. Right, so we're getting ready to go into the oven and um, at this point, I'm just going to scoop out the dough a little bit and we are using a silicone mat. With the silicone mats, you don't need to add any butter, but if you don't have one, you just grease your cookie sheet and you're good to go. So I'm measuring out about a cup. And it had a, it had a look kind of rough, right? It has some weight. Okay, nice, not bad, not bad. And I'm gonna Put about maybe three each, probably bake about six. Three in the traditional and three in the, the one that has raisins and cherries in it. And I'm leaving adequate space on the silicone part. Good, this, this thing has some weight, boy. <laughs> you hear it rocking?
all right so i like how we look in and we're just gonna put these in our preheated oven and take them out maybe about two to three minutes just before they finish glaze them with a simple syrup add some sugar and then we're gonna take them out right so coconut drop take two these are the ones that came out of the oven before um they didn't quite come out how i would have liked them i think the i added it my hand probably slipped with the liquid so we did over a different batch a new batch you could see here and we put half a cup of water i think sometimes depending on the temperature how the day is it depends on how much water you use see why i said bacon is a science so we go in again and we're going to put these out and i'm for sure these are going to stand up strong and they're going to come out how i want them to Right, so I think we're good there, and we're gonna put these in the oven. Right, so this is the second batch, which I am so proud of. Um, we did it over and we used half the amount of water, and this is what they look like. I even put a little simple syrup glaze on it and then sprinkle it with some sugar. And this is what we, mm, this is what we're working with. This is what we're working with, some proper, proper coconut drops this one was too cakey but now we get it perfect with this one so with this you could have it with your tea we actually had it with some herbal tea um you could have it with chocolate tea you could have it with milk you could have it with whatever but this is a very forgiving recipe so if you try it out make sure and let us know special thanks to cuisine for sponsoring this episode of simply local cuisine products can be found at massey stores nationwide so guys let me get into this coconut drop and the fact that i baked in the kitchen and it came out good <laughs>